All right, Dan, so I'm in a highly competitive market. Let me know what market. Always hit me up with specifics. The more specific you can help me, I'll get you. If I'm not familiar with market, I'll just tell you. I'm not familiar with the market, but I am familiar with competitive markets. I'm in one as well. Um, I also work like Florida is very different. So some some parts of our market are more competitive than others. Um, but look, made 40 offers on the MLS. Almost got a few deals because of being the backup offer, but because I'm working with investors, I have lined up. But I have not been willing to waive inspection on some of these offers. So, okay, Dan, so that's a great question. And what I'm going to tell you, it comes down to a couple things. The first is volume. 40 offers, not enough. It's fantastic that you made that many because most investors don't make that many. But, um, you know, remember the, the statistics or the metrics that I pointed out earlier. 100 offers. I had, I had a call with a guy the other day doing one of my one-on-one -on -one calls. He's like, how many offers do I have to make and whatever? And I, I threw out a number of 100. And he's like, that many? And I said, man, no, I'll break it down from 20 offers a day. That's not that many. If you make it 20 calls a day, most of them will tell you not available, blah, 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 hang up, hang up, hang up, whatever. Um, it's not even going to be three minutes. And then some of them you're going to talk a little bit more, five minutes, 10 minutes, get a couple of details, send over an offer. But if you're doing 20 of those a day, you could do that in one hour, two hours. You do that for five days, that's 100 offers, man. So 40 offers, um, it's it's trust me, you're you're probably like in the 80th percentile at least of new students, but it's just not enough. So the first thing you need to do is hit volume. Second thing you need to do is remember my statistic about um, you're going to make the majority of your deals, 80% of them between the fifth and 12th point of contact. So what that means is that even if you don't get it the first time, you need to follow up. I can't tell you how many deals I've got from gotten just by following up. You'd be surprised how many deals, even if they're in contract, pending, contingent, they fall out. A lot of these guys are working with FHA buyers. I don't know. Maybe they go buy a new car and they get denied from their pre-approval that they had, or you know, it's contingent on selling a um, uh, a home and then they couldn't sell it, or they back out, or they find something else, or it's another wholesaler. You just never know. So you have to be very diligent in your follow-up, and your follow-up can't be random. It needs to be like this is why. I, organization which is something that does not come terribly easy to me so important so with some of my newer students you know if they're starting with zero budget they have to do this kind of the hard way with literally like an excel spreadsheet and and gmail and it can be done but what i highly recommend is when you get to a spend of about between 100 and 200 dollars a month that you can consistently spend that's when you want to get a CRM because it makes your follow-up system so much more efficient and effective, and you can even automate some of those things. So you can put in stuff like 30 days from now, my system I use, Reifax, you know, 30 days from now, send an email to this real estate agent, send an email to the seller, see if they're still ready. Like, if you think about it just in terms of common sense statistics, the chance that you hit a motivated seller, even an agent, at the exact right time when they're exactly ready to sell, it happens, but it's much more likely that you're going to be in contact with them several times before it actually goes down. So you want to be following up on these things. And like I've had situations where I follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up for sometimes weeks. And I've had, you know, deals even months. And then eventually the seller is ready to go with me. And then I've had times where like I'm dealing with either a seller or a realtor. And I've followed up with them so many times that it doesn't matter how much more direct mail or phone calls they get. When they get to that point where they're ready to sell, I have a level of rapport or at least at a basic level of familiarity where, you know, it's been six months and I get a call coming in and they're like, Mike, you know, I'm ready to sell now. And in some case, I don't even remember these people. I'm like, oh shit, like what property was that again? Um... But, you know, you, you frame it like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, you know, I look at a lot of properties. Just remind me um, so you don't seem like completely clueless. But my point is they'll hit you up. And then also, you know, if you're dealing, this especially works really well with realtors. If you do follow up, even when something, you know, you kind of give your pitch as a as an investor. Right. So it's like it's not just like, hey, I'm interested in one, two, three Main Street specifically, which is how the average person buys a retail property. It's like, hey, hey, agent, I'm interested in one, two, three. Uh, Main Street. Oh, it's not available. Okay, yo, are you taking backup offers? Let me submit a backup offer just so you know I'm buying cash. Um, you know I can close immediately as soon as we get clear title, so I'm ready to roll really, really quickly. And also, um, I'm not working with another realtor, so you can keep. Um, you know, you represent the seller side and the buyer side, and you get the full 100% commission. Right? They're gonna want to work with you first of all. But let's say that deal sells. You keep hitting them up, and, and you tell them like, I really want this property, but also I'm looking for any property. In this zip code, three three, you know, four three three zip code, and then you want to give criteria because that is subconsciously qualifying yourself as an investor. That's why I talk about um, 
like posturing and positioning yourself as a legitimate investor, not only saying what you want, but what you don't want. So like when I talk to, you know, when people call me, a lot of wholesalers call me when they see my deals and they'll be like, I'm a cash buyer. And so I kind of go through a qualification process and talk to them a little bit. And I can tell very quickly, I'm like, what are you looking for? Well, put yourself in like a, a seller's shoes or an investor, cash buyer. I mean, anybody in, in his business, right? And you're like, what are you looking for? Well, you know, anything I can make money off of. It's not that that instantly disqualifies you. But what if you say, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing rehabs right now. Um, I might be interested in holding a couple for my portfolio. You know, I do a bunch of, you know, you can go into your elevator pitch as much as you want. But um, I'm looking for single family houses, preferably three twos. Um, I would take a two one if it's more than a thousand square feet. I prefer concrete block houses. Um, but I will look at a wood frame house if and only if it's on a concrete slab and I don't want, I want zero HOA. I don't want anything inside of a gated community and I don't want anything east of, you know, I-95 and I don't want this zip code, this zip code. So by saying your criteria and also saying what you don't want, now you're on their radar as someone who's very serious. So again, that's the rapport building. That's making the introduction. And then with those types of agents, even if you don't get the deal, then you want to follow them every 30 days. Hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm still looking, man. And remember, I'm going to give you 100% commission. And remember, the average reality of a realtor, right? They, they get their business. Like a lot of it's like either they're paid marketing and word of mouth. But the average person is a retail buyer buying for their personal residence. So they are buying one house every five years, 10 years, and they may or may not give you a referral and then you're and, and they're bringing a buyer's agents to take half of that listing agent's paycheck and here you come along and say hey i'm gonna handle all the paperwork you don't have to fill that shit out i'm gonna do all the due diligence um i just need you to convince the seller to say yes i'll give you a hundred percent of your commission uh, i'm not working with another realtor and if you keep giving me deals and pocket listings i'll buy you know three of these from you every single month well now it's in their best interest to work with you and then when you keep following up every single month every month every month well, then it's almost like they owe you. It's like, hey, man, hey, hey, Rick, you got something for me yet? You got something for me yet? You get so annoying, not like annoying, annoying in that way, but you get so like on their radar that when something does come up, they feel like you're an easy sell, that you're serious, and they will hit you up. So remember, if you're making those 40 offers, that's dope. You're doing a great job, probably better than most, especially beginners, but the follow-up is crucial. Um, whether you get the deal, the specific deal or not, you always want to be following up. And then, um, so I'm reading something out and I'm losing my train of thought, man. Um, but, but you're in here for the long term, man. So, you know, if the 40 deals don't show up, you know, it's not like, oh, I wasted 40 deals of my time. Well, first of all, you gave, gained valuable experience of like interacting and talking with these realtors or sellers, knowing what they're looking for, learning how to talk the talk, which helps with your posturing. Even the language I use, I talk about this often, like, um, I use specific language. When you when you speak with a certain vernacular, it shows that you're in the biz. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you go to a bar and you're like, hello, bartender, can I have a whiskey drink? Can I have a whiskey and ice? That's very different from someone who comes in and says, you know, I want, uh, you know, McAllen or even a, like a Jack on the Rocks or, uh, you know, a specific drink, neat, or, you know, you specify. It shows that, okay, you've probably been around the block. So when I talk to realtors, instead of saying, I'll send you my highest and best offer, I make sure to say, I'll send you H&B tomorrow, you know, um, uh, or I'll send EMD, like little things like that. They really go a long way. My point is you want to be focusing on making those relationships. And again, if you made 40 offers, it's not like the 40 offers are dead. You know, 40 offers, maybe 30 of them are dead. You know, 10 are still alive. Maybe you can get a backup offer on five of them and maybe one will go through, or you can form a relationship with five realtors that may not turn into a deal tomorrow, but they may bring something your way within the next three months. I'm assuming that you don't want to be a wholesaler and just, just be the person. While I focus a lot on getting your first deal or getting your next deal, that's just to help you with capital to reinvest into your business so you can make it not a one-off thing and so you can make it into an actual business. Um, and so that's where you just, your, your real issue here is two things, maybe three things. Volume, hit volume. Make sure you are doing regular follow-up. Yeah, so basically two things. And then make sure you're doing that regular follow-up and then focus on those relationships. All right. Um, up my down payment and offered to pay closing costs. They still took a lower offer because of no inspection. Yeah, that'll happen sometimes. But sometimes the inspection thing is like, 
goes back to qualification and how you are posturing yourself. So I'd probably need to like see your emails of what you sent and your kind of your pitch. It's just like anything, man. Like if you want a shark tank or something, it's how you speak. Like, did you make them know that it's in their best interest? All those little things I talked about. I don't necessarily like say all that shit off rip, but like I subtly slip those things in there. Oh yeah, I just did a uh, I finished a rehab in Del Rey. And then also rapport building. These are human beings, right? You can still build some rapport, you know, if they have family and stuff like that. Don't harp on it, don't stay stuck on it, but talk about it and remember those things. You should like be taking you should have files where you kind of take notes on this type of stuff so when you call them back, they remember you. And then um you say, "Okay, okay, man, like I know I can't do it. and it depends on your inspection period." And I have a whole system, man. Like if something it's super hot. The price is low. Maybe it's like, uh, you know, mold or fire damage property is a lot of competition. You're going to have to hire, offer higher or you're going to have to, you know, give a lower inspection period or something like that. But, um, you know, it depends. If there's less competition, you can get better terms. But in terms of inspection, you could just say, like, let's say you ask for a 14-day inspection, 10-day inspection. And they're like, no, nah, we can't do that. Say, okay, listen, listen. We usually close a lot faster than that. It's just that we're looking at a couple of different properties. Now you're invoking a little bit of FOMO in them because they know, okay, well, I, I might not have this guy available at all times, right? But remember, they have they probably have skepticism because they don't know you. So it's like, all right, well, you know, we just use a uh, 10-day inspection as our, it's part of our S, one of our SOPs. Again, talking to talk, standard operating procedures, which gives you the, uh, optics of maybe a larger business or a more, um, I don't know, professional, serious, whatever kind of business. But when you use that type of terminology, um, the optics are a little bit different. So one of our SOPs is just to do 10 day inspection, but we can typically do it much faster. I just need to coordinate with our GC again, that's speak, you know, realtor or investor speak for general contractor. And the fact that you use a general contractor, uh, also speaks to your professionalism and your credibility. Um, and I'm not sure what his schedule is, so I'll try to get it done as soon as possible. But we always put like, you know, five days. But I, we can probably get it done within five days. Um, but I do need to have executed contract before I send him out there because, you know, I'm not local or I'm out of town or whatever your situation is. And, you know, I have to pay for the inspection. It's going to cost me $400. And I'm not going to pay $400 if I don't have even a guarantee of doing the deal. So little things like that. And then you can ask, okay. Well, if they do zero inspection, there's a good chance, yeah, well, you just lost that deal. But a lot of these guys, you know, they may just have a lower inspection. So, okay, well, what's on the table? You know, how much are these guys offering? Hey, remember, I, and then you, you know, play, be human being. Like, don't be too serious. Like, if you lose a deal, cool. Call that agent back and be like, Mike, uh, come on, man. I lost the last one with you. Come on, you got to hook me up with something, man. You gave my deal away. You gave my deal away. Come on, what you got for me? All right, Mike, you got to make me a promise, man. You know I like you. We've been talking, right? And uh, within the next 30 days, if you get anything in this area, you got to give me a call first, man. I, we got to do something together, all right? Can I count on you, man? You already made me lose my favorite property because of a two-day inspection period. Obviously, it'd be longer than that, but, you know, because of that, come on, man. Come on, man. Just uh, just give me, a, give me your word that you're going to give me a shot when you get that next property in. Can I count on you? Jay's going to count on you. Come on, I'm trying to put it through college, man. All right, great. All right, well, listen, uh, just in case you forget, I know life happens, but um, this is your phone number. I'm going to shoot you a little text in about two weeks just to stay on your radar, and I'll shoot you an email as well with just some of my criteria just to remind you. But please, 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 man, uh, you know, it's great talking to you. You know, I like to kind of clown a little bit, but, you know, on, on a real note, we really are serious. We'll close as soon as um, we have clean title. We can close, um, and, you know, immediately upon having clear title. I'm very serious. I'm trying to make this business work, and... Um, you know, give me a shout, and you know, if we get this one done, um, you know, I would love to do a lot more with you in the future. I'm really, really looking forward to a mutually beneficial relationship with you. All right, all right, cool, man. Great talking to you, and um, you know, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Like these are the things that it's very simple. Some of the stuff I teach, but in a way, a lot of people don't do that. So that's how I would kind of um, you know, deal with that situation. All right. So let me see if I got any other questions on here.